Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you appreciate my content, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm notices me. For those of you that are interested, my graphic novel, The Lie Behind the Star, launched on Indiegogo and it is funding now. Check it out. Link in the description. The Three Body Problem series is one of the best trilogies of science fiction books that I've read in recent years. But in this video, we will be discussing its spin-off, Redemption of Time. Redemption of Time was written by Bashul and continues the storyline of the Three Body Problem universe. It mainly follows the character Tian Ming, the only character in the original series to ever make direct contact with the Trisolarans. Redemption of Time describes his time among the Trisolarans and how he was visited by a powerful entity which gave him knowledge about the nature of the universe. In this video, we will mainly discuss the nature of the original universe and how it began to collapse. In Redemption of Time, we learn that the original 10-dimensional universe, before it began to collapse, was constructed upon energy exchange between photons. It was literally a universe of light. All particles and antiparticles were formed from photons, and their mutual annihilation resulted in yet more photons. Thus, everything occurred at the speed of light, which was infinite. Even more marvelously, because particles and antiparticles balanced each other out, the total energy level of the universe was zero. This was an incredible state of symmetry, and the foundation of the emergence of intelligence in the ten-dimensional universe. Matter, life, sentience, civilization. In this Edenic universe, everything was part of the same whole. All matter possessed life. All life possessed sentience and all sentience existed in a state of harmonious civilization. In the original universe, all of creation existed in a state of perfect harmony. In this original universe, the speed of light was infinite. It had slowed with each dimension collapse to its current rate in the third dimension. The state of life in this universe could not be described in normal language. Tian Ming was given what the book refers to as idea abstractions, a form of language which could communicate the proper nuances and subtleties of the original ten-dimensional universe. It is mentioned that the Trisolarans did not have the ability to perceive at the abstractions. Tian Ming learns that the ten-dimensional universe itself was alive, and our three-dimensional universe was its shriveling corpse. Unlike the three-dimensional universe, in which lonely stars hung in the vast emptiness of space, the entire universe was a living being. All life was but a part of this grand life, and all intelligence but a component of the highest intelligence. The dark forest state was an impossibility for this transcendent being of unified matter and spirit. In this original state of existence, individual presence was seamlessly harmonized with the universe, and yet within the ten-dimensional universe there was the Lurker who sought to darken the ten-dimensional universe, ending the Edenic Age. The story of the Lurker obviously is in reference to the biblical stories found in the book of Genesis. The ten-dimensional universe was conscious, an ultimate being, essentially God. The Lurker was a part of it who rebelled against its ruler, essentially Lucifer. The biblical reference is not exclusive to the spin-off either. In the original series, the ten-dimensional universe is referred to as the Edenic Age multiple times, a clear reference to the Garden of Eden, where Lucifer's actions led to the fall of mankind. The universe had collapsed from ten dimensions to nine. A traitorous child of the Edenic Age had committed matricide against the source of its life. Of the infinite number of consciousnesses that collectively formed the Master, a single consciousness suddenly launched a rebellion, leading to the dimension reduction of the universe. Caught off guard, the master could neither stop the revolt nor understand it. If a child still within the womb decided to attack the mother from within, how could the mother have been prepared for it? And that was how the lurker succeeded. The lurker's actions were not only incomprehensible to Tian Ming, but also to the master consciousness that at once spanned the entire cosmos. How could anyone who experienced the vibrancy of that world tolerate the emptiness and crudeness of the three-dimensional universe? He found it even more incomprehensible 
that the lurker would wish to destroy such a beautiful world in harmony. How vicious and crazed was such evil. Then he witnessed the moment of destruction. In a corner of this universe, life's light suddenly blinked out, leaving a small patch of darkness like a drop of ink on fresh white paper. At first the darkness seemed minor, but it quickly spread at the speed of light, turning the whole 10 dimensional universe pitch black. Even though the destruction happened super fast, literally at infinite speed, it followed a clear order of events. Tian Ming decoded the details through what the book calls Eddy Abstractions. Describing it with our three-dimensional language would be basically impossible, but think of it like a picture made of a bunch of domino tiles standing up. They all fell, but you can still make out the flattened picture. In an instant, the universe collapsed from ten dimensions to nine. This event, while catastrophic, did not utterly destroy the life of the ten dimension, as would dimension collapses on lesser dimensions on lesser beings. Instead, the collapse split them into separate consciousnesses. The nine-dimensional universe resembled a flawed version of the ten-dimensional universe, akin to a cracked egg. Drawing parallels between the Chinese myth wherein segments of the god Pangu's body transformed into the sun, moon, and mountains, and rivers post-mortem, the nine-dimensional universe originated from a deceased state of the ten-dimensional universe. Despite its current innate state, it served as a battleground where numerous lives continued to clash. Essentially, it retained the essence of a battlefield. The book describes the nine-dimensional universe as a cosmic city in ruins marred by the ravages of war and confusion. As the process of dimension reduction neared its conclusion, remnants of the once expansive ten-dimensional universe fiercely resisted. In this clash between darkness and light, Brilliant rays erupted, their intensity surpassing even the radiance of the Milky Way the book mentions. And it actually uses an analogy comparing a candle to the full power of the sun. Amidst this cosmic struggle, a significant portion of entities retained memories and civilizations inherited from the decaying ten-dimensional realm. And united by a collective endeavor, they sought to breathe life back into the fading dimensions. Though it is mentioned that some succumbed to the deceptive allure of the lurker, betraying their cosmic kin by aligning themselves with the forces of the opposition, this section of the story also mirrors the biblical story of Lucifer, who was ultimately cast out of heaven along with several fallen angels who had taken his side. Now all of this is described to Tian Ming through idea abstractions, so we're meant to imagine that we are reading a version of the truth that has been extremely dumbed down to work with our human language. Upon receiving all of this information, Tian Ming actually comes to a revelation about the original universe, a revelation of a paradoxical and near incomprehensible nature. If only they had lived in the ten-dimensional universe, where the speed of light was infinite. Wait. A barely formed thought emerged in Tian Ming's mind, soon coming into focus, a key point whose familiarity had caused him to ignore its significance until now. How long has the three-dimensional universe existed? He gazed at Sophon intently. About 13,894,000,000 years, said Sophon. How long did the four-dimensional universe exist? About one million years. What about the five-dimensional universe? 161 years. And the six-dimensional universe? 90 days and 11 hours. Seven-dimensional. Two minutes and three seconds. Eight-dimensional. 12 milliseconds. Nine-dimensional. 31 milliseconds. Tian Ming suppressed his rising excitement and asked the final question. What about the ten-dimensional universe? Unexpectedly, Sofan was silent for a moment before she said, Forever. There was no time in the ten-dimensional universe. Of course, Tian Ming muttered, infinite speed, infinite efficiency, everything completed from the start, finished in an instant without the passage of any time. It was a universe without time. The original universe had only lasted for a single instant, and yet it lasted forever. It was a realm beyond time, truly. Each descending dimension would last longer and longer before finally decaying. The revelations about the original 10-dimensional universe 
its collapse and the subsequent formation of the nine-dimensional realm serves as a compelling extension to Le Shishin's original story in my opinion. The narrative conveyed to Tianming through Adi abstractions challenges our conventional understanding of time and Adi abstractions themselves are a fascinating concept. Tianming's realization of the timeless nature of the Ten Dimensional Universe also adds complexity to the overarching narrative. It promotes contemplation on the potential transient nature of our own three-dimensional reality. Redemption of Time also does a pretty good job of expanding upon the philosophical dimensions of the three-body problem universe. And it doesn't stop there. In future videos, we will discuss some of the other interesting aspects of Redemption of Time, including an exploration of one of the oldest surviving civilizations in the universe, Singer's Race, who in the original series launched a dimension strike against our solar system, collapsing it into two dimensions. But that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. And as I mentioned in the beginning, the Indiegogo for my new graphic novel campaign is launching right now, and it will be going for the next 25 days or so. If you are interested in supporting the channel by supporting this graphic novel, then click the link in the description. Thank you so much, guys.